Hi guys, my name is Mitchell, and we are going to be talking about the brain and the spinal cord. So the first structure we are going to be talking about is the brain stem, which is right here. The first structure of the brain stem I'm going to be talking about is the medulla oblongata, which is right here. Then the pons, and then the midbrain, which is right here. The next structure of the brainstem is called the capora quadrigemina, which is this structure right here, the two little bumps. The top bump is called the superior colliculi, and the bottom bump, which is right here, is called the inferior colliculi. The next structure of the brain that I'm going to be talking about is the diencephalon, which is right here. We have the pituitary gland, which is right here. The hypothalamus, which is this structure right here. The thalamus, which is this circular structure in the center. And then the pineal gland, which is right here. So here we have the cerebellum and it is connected to the medulla oblongata and the pons through the three peduncles. There is a superior, middle, and inferior peduncle that connects it to the brain. It is also known as the little brain and made up into two different lobes, which is called anterior and posterior. There's also the arbor vitae, which also means tree of life, and it is made up of white matter. Okay, here we have the frontal lobe temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. This is the central sulcus, which separates the frontal and parietal lobe, and we have our pre-central gyrus and post-central gyrus. Then we have the <laughs> cortex is the outer layer, which is composed of the folded gray matter. Then we have our corpus callosum, fornix, and the um, cingulate gyrus, which surrounds the corpus callosum. Here we have the spinal cord. Here, this part is the gray matter. This is the white matter. This is the posterior horn. Down here is the anterior horn. Here we have the dorsal root and the ventral root. And this is the dorsal root ganglia, which is a bunch of nerve bodies. And they come together to form the spinal nerve. Here we have the central canal, which is surrounded by the kishimer. And the dorsal root is for the sensory, and the ventral root is for motor function. This is the meninges of the spinal cord. This is the dura matter. This is the arachnoid matter. And this is the pia matter. Okay, so this is the eyeball. And this yellow is the optic nerve. And where they meet in the back is the optic chiasma. The olfactory nerve lies above the cribriform plate. The olfactory nerve consists of the olfactory tract, the bulb, and the filaments. The filaments is what branches down into the superior area of the nasal conche. In this model, you can see the cribriform plate a lot more clear. The olfactory nerve would lay above and the branches will enter into the superior nasal conche. So the brachial plexus emerges at five different levels, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. C5 and C6 merge to establish the upper trunk. C7 continuously forms the middle trunk. And C8 and T1 forms the lower trunk. The brachial plexus of the upper trunk then splits off into the axillary nerve as well as the radial nerve. The axillary nerve is deep into the shoulder, whereas the radial nerve continues further down until it reaches the thumb. Then you have the musculotuneus, musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, and the ulnar nerve, which travels down here behind the elbow and opens up through here. Then you have the femoral 
nerve extends from the lumbar plexus L2, L3, and L4. The lumbar, uh, the femoral nerve is part of the f uh, femoral triangle, which consists of the femoral artery as well as the femoral vein. They can be found between the ing inguinal ligament, the sartorius, and the adductor longus.